So today we're talking about seven techniques that every beginner should learn. All right, I've got my number 12 brush, got my watercolor paints, water, paper, all the things. Let's get started. So on my palette here, I have a really deep color, kind of a burgundy, a little bit more blue, I would say in there. I'm just adding in some water to make it a bit more runny. And we're gonna do our wet on dry technique. It's simply the way most people paint. We're taking wet paint, putting it on dry paper. So I'm gonna draw our paint out of flower here. And I'm going to do five petal shapes, C-curve, C-curve, and then fill in the center. A little bit of a pointy part in the middle. Again, now I just put my paintbrush in water and squeezed it off the side. So now I have a petal that's a little bit lighter. It's gonna give me a little bit more um, dimension in my flower because not all the petals are going to be the same value. That one is really light right there. So we're doing this technique. It's gonna be a technique you'll use pretty much all the time. Let's add in some leaves as well. So I've just taken some of that watery paint that's already on my palette and adding in another C-curve shape on either side, filling it in, C-curve, C-curve fill it in and there you go for your leaves very simple so the next technique we're going to do is wet on wet technique which is not one you'll use as much but it's really lovely if you can figure out the technique it's going to give you a lot of versatility in your paintings so essentially and i'm adding a little bit of pigment to the water so maybe you can see it a little bit better i'm just going to paint out a flower shape in water and you can sort of see it there. There's a little bit of tint in my water here. So five petals similar to this flower I just did for you guys. And once all those petals are filled out, a little bit more water here, just so that it doesn't dry up too fast, because I do want the paper to be wet, that it gleams a little bit, but not pooling, not puddling. Let's take this really bright red paint, add a little bit more to that. And we're going to start touching the wet petals and allowing that paint to spread. As you see, it's going to create um, a really different look than what we have on the left side. That paint is starting to spread, the paint is starting to move because if there is paint that is very runny and you're putting it on already wet paper, there's nothing else that's gonna happen except that that paint will bleed together with the water or if there's other paint on the paper. So wet paint, it's gonna flow where there's water, where there's wet paint. And I just added in some red and some yellow. I'm just kind of spreading it around, moving that paint around a little bit. But I wanted to make sure that this wet on wet technique can be seen. And this is something that you can use for many different objects. So it's just another way that we can add together um, some really beautiful florals. So now, same thing, I painted my leaf with water going in and just dropping in that color, a little bit darker here, adding in some darker saturated paint and allowing that to just spread around. And you're going to get more of a softer edge when this dries because you use so much water versus the one on the left. All right, now we're gonna add in our center. We've got some brown paint. that We're just gonna stipple in uh, creating kind of a star-shaped center for this flower. And this is also uh, wet on dry because our flower is basically dry at this point. If it was wet, then we would definitely call this a wet on wet technique, like the one on the right. And now if we start stippling in right here, we're gonna see a lot of spreading of our center, which is fine. Sometimes you don't want it to spread out too far. Um, right now, I'm gonna demonstrate something else. We're gonna do lifting. So this is lifting color, taking a brush that's been dipped in water, dabbed on a paper towel, and then you lift that color. It's ever so slight because our paint is light here, but you can see that it does remove a lot of that color and it just creates more dimension for your object, your flower in this case. It's a great technique to use, especially on leaves, just to emulate the reflection of light. So watch this paint and see how it spreads. Our flower has had a few minutes to dry, so it's not sopping wet. But as you can see, that middle is moving a lot more than the middle on the left side. Let's go ahead and lift some paint off this leaf as well, just to do that technique. Uh, so we have two techniques in one that I just showed you here. Let's add in a little bit more dark on the outside just to create 
a little bit more dimension in this leaf. And then we can just leave that or we can even blend it with a clean brush, however you'd like to do it. Okay, so now what I wanna teach you to do is something called dry brushing. We'll just use this blue, cobalt blue paint, and you're gonna dip your paintbrush in your paint, but it's still really wet, so then what you're gonna do is once you have the consistency you need, you're going to dip that paintbrush on your paper towel or rag, and then you're just gonna start scrubbing back and forth on your paper allowing that paint to start running out and drying out on your brush. And you're gonna see a really beautiful texture that you can use. This is a great technique to use for skies and for water, even for texture in the ground or for mountains as well. Let's do this again in yellow. So again, dabbing your brush, taking off some of that wetness and just scrubbing back and forth. And you'll see a lot of the white of the paper shows through because the brush is kind of skipping paper parts because it's so dry. In this last section, I'm gonna teach you how to do three different watercolor washes. And the first one we're gonna do with this orange paint is going to be called just a flat wash. So we're gonna use one color and I'm just going to paint in a rectangle here just for this demonstration. And we're gonna fill this in. So we're gonna take this gorgeous orange paint and we're gonna fill in this rectangle completely with the same amount of orange paint. A flat wash is going to have the same pigment on all parts of it. And so if you're wanting to create a sky that all has the same texture and same color, this would be the wash to use. So the second type of wash that we're gonna to create today is called a graduated or a gradient wash. And we'll use this blue as an example. So we're gonna start off pretty dark here at the top of our wash. And then what we're gonna do is rinse our brush, uh, squeegee off the side or dab it. And then we're just gonna start pulling that color down because we want to slowly have a lighter and lighter version of this color until we've faded that color at the bottom. This is also a great way to do a sky, for example, and it can look quite lovely, especially since sometimes if you're looking out in nature, the sky tends to be pretty dark at the top and it can feel or look like it's lighter as it gets more close to the horizon line. This last one is called a variegated and it is where you take three different colors of paint. So we're gonna do, it's almost like a sunset. We've got red, then we're gonna start adding in some orange paint in the middle. And then finally, we'll add in some yellow paint at the bottom. So you have three colors slowly transitioning into each other. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment down below letting me know which wash is your favorite. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.